folks, Tom Vassell here. Jason Levine. Today we're taking a look at a classic game by Dr. Reiner Knizia called Modern Art. This was published, I'm not sure, oh, Hans and Gluck published it in Europe and then Mayfair Games brought it to America. I got a copy of Modern Art, uh, I want to say 15 years ago. I believe the game came out in 96. 96. That's a pretty old game. That's 20 years from us doing this review. Yes, And yes. the game is still around. I don't believe it's in print at this point. Uh, Although Eagle Griffin did make a Modern Art, the card game. Which isn't quite the same. It's slightly different rules, but this one, like this is my original that I got back in 96. Yeah, this is definitely the original box. All right, we'll take a look at how it plays, and then we'll tell you what we think. The board for Modern Art shows the five different artists. We have Light Metal, Yoko, Christian P, Carl Gitter, and Crypto. And each of these artists has a distinct style and also a color that matches them. And you're going to have cards full of these. Each player is going to draw a certain amount of these cards to start the game with. You're also going to have a certain amount of money to start the game with. You can see money comes in different denominations, stickers that you put on different chips. And the goal of the game is to have the most money at the end of the game. Now, each player is going to take turns, and on a player's turn, they're going to play a card from their hand. This card is the painting that they are putting up for auction. So here I have a beautiful piece by Carl Gitter, and also the symbol in the corner of the card shows uh, what kind of auction it is. Now, this here is a fixed price auction. So as the auctioneer, I can say, I want $13 for this one, or 13000 I guess would be it. And then, clockwise order, each player can pay 13 to me. The first person does it, gets the painting, and pays me the money. If no one does it, I pay the bank 13 and it is my painting. The next kind, here's another Carl Gitter painting. This is a once around. Each player can make a bid, and it has to be higher than the last person. But you only get one bid, and the person who is the auctioneer gets the last and final bid if they so desire. Then we have this one. Here's a light metal painting. This one, this symbol here, is basically freeform auction. Everyone can bid. It's kind of like, you know, three, six, seven, nine, and people keep bidding until someone does the final bid and that person wins that card. This crypto card here shows a closed bidding. And this one, players are going to put money into their hand and bid and reveal it. And whoever bids the highest gets the card. If there's a tie, it's broken to the auctioneer's left. And then they get the card. There's also equal cards here. These basically are double. You put these with another card, and now you're auctioning off two cards, and you go by the second card. If you're the only person, if you only have one of these and you play it, you don't have another crypto card, because it has to be the same artist. Then we go around the table till someone else plays a crypto card. You auction them off together and split the money. Now this will continue until someone lays down the fifth card of one of the artists. So the fifth card of crypto is placed down. At that point, we look at all the paintings that were played that round. So let's say these paintings were played this round. We have uh, five crypto cards, three Carl Gitters, three light metals, and one Yoko card here were auctioned off that round. Well, crypto had the most, so crypto is going to be worth 30. Carl Gitter and Light Metal are tied, so when ties are broken over here because there's fewer Light Metal cards in the deck, so Light Metal cards are worth 20, and then um, Carl Gitter's are going to be worth 10. Yoko and Christian P's are worth nothing. Players will then immediately sell all their paintings for the current price. So if I had, for example, two Cryptos and a Carl Gitter, I would get 70, so 30, 30, and 10. And if I had the Yoko, tough luck. Every card is sold. Every card is gotten rid of. Players will add more cards in their hand depending on the round. There's a little chart in the rule book that shows how many cards you start the first round and how many you add each hand. Um, to your, and you start another round. Let's say in the second round, it looks like this. Now, 30, 20, and 10. In the second round, light metal cards are worth 30. Christian P's are worth 20, and Carl Gitter's are worth 40. Previous rounds will add together, so paintings could be really valuable at the end of the game. However, even though Crypto's were 30 in the first round, if they don't make the top three in the second round, they're worth zero in the second round. So you have to be careful rounds. So in the third round, this is what happens here. So in the third round, Christian P's are worth 30, Yoko's worth 30, and Light Metals are worth 50. 
And then in the final round, Crypto comes back with a vengeance. And Christian P's would be worth 40, Carl Getters would be worth 60, and Crypto's would be worth 60, while these two would be worth nothing in the final round. You sell your paintings in the final round, count your money, most money is the winner. All right, modern art. Modern art is, in many circles, known as the king of the auction games. Yes. And that's because there is four different types of auctions in here. Um, the once around table is used in a lot of games. Uh, yes. The blind bidding is used in many games. The name of price, that's not used in as many games. And the, what's the other one? The uh, Oh, Freeform. Yeah, the Freeform. Now, Freeform, most people know because it's used in Monopoly. <laughs> but it's really not used in that many other games. Most games don't have Freeform auctions. No, it's usually more coordinated around the table. But, but Freeform reminds me of the kind where you can go around the table multiple times versus the once around one where it's once around and the last person gets the hammer and gets to decide what they want to do. Now, as this is a Mayfair uh, um, game and it's 20 years old, well, actually, it looks it's pretty much the same components Mayfair is putting out nowadays, um, yes. but it's not the highest of quality, right? You have these little chips. And they, the card artwork is very modern. You're going to like it or not. I personally don't like some of it. Some of it I think is fine. Who, Wait, there's a liquid a, metal. It's liquid metal and crypto. Christian P. I like Yoko's art. Oh, Yoko. Well, Yoko's like the cartoony art. And Christian P art. is okay. And crypto. Carl Gitter. He liked boxes. I. He. He wasn't a very good designer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so anyhow, the components are okay, and this box is actually quite a bit bigger than you need it to be. Yeah. The game itself. What do you think? I like it. I mean, I like auctions. So, I. I mean, this was one of the first auction games I ever played. And, you know, it threw me for a loop. And I'm like, wow, there's multiple auctions. And the fact that you could drop in not just a single auction, but there's also those the equals cards where you could play two. So you could play two cards and make the auction worth more. And it made it, it, made it very unique because you have different, different auctions and you're doing, you know, you're doing different things. And the values change. Over the course of the game, the values change from... You know, this thing might not be worth much, but later on, if it got a token earlier, then it's worth a lot more than something that didn't get a token earlier. That whole first, second, and third in each round is very huge, too, because there's five companies, only three are going to score. I really, really, really like the way the auctions work and the game. Yeah, modern art is, I mean, if you don't like auctions, don't get it. I mean, that's all the game is, is auctions. There's nothing else in it, and it's all about auctioning, but it's not just about the auctions as much as it is also about being the auctioneer see yes. this game is pretty critical because in many games you auction and get things but in this game you could technically not win hardly anything and still win the game if, by selling the right cards yeah, at the right time exactly if you have a card that you know has a 30 chip and a 30 chip and it's worth you know 70 you could put out that card and someone might pay you 35 40 for it and you know if five of them don't come out in the next round, it might be worth nothing, and they just paid you a lot of money for a worthless piece of art. Now, this is where I've, I've kind of lowered my opinion of modern art when it came out over the years. I really liked the game, and I thought it was fine. But as time went by and I played it more and more, I was a little disheartened for a couple reasons. One, you have to kind of really like auctions. And I like auctions, but this game is just kind of auction, 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 auction. But my biggest concern with the game is it's very player dependent. You can win the game based on poor play by somebody else. For example, let's say me, Jason, and uh, Billy Bob are playing a game. And I put up a card and Billy Bob says, oh, 100. Pays me 100 for that card. Billy Bob gets the card. We keep going on. And then when the game comes over, I beat Jason by 30. And it's directly because Billy Bob paid way too much for that card. Yes. And I have seen that happen in this game where a poor player caused someone else to win. Yes, I, I agree with that. I mean, the, the one thing I don't like about it, and it goes similar to what you're saying, is that the value of a card, like I would, I never in this game pay more than 50% of what I think the value would be. Because if you do, then you're losing money to the other player. So 
you really have to value what you're bidding on very carefully. And some people don't and just bid like crazy. You know, if it's worth 50, they bid 49. And yes, you got a you made a dollar, but you just gave $49 to the other player. Right, and you have to understand that going in, that the person you're paying is directly benefiting maybe more than you. And once, if you play with five equal players who are skilled, the game is much better for that. This game is not so keen on having a new person coming in, and not every game does that, but this one is very, very susceptible to that. Um, I, I also thought that the card game version gave me a very similar feel to this in a faster amount of time. Yeah, but this isn't that long of a game. I mean, this game takes less than an hour to play. It's not. I don't feel it's that long, and I, you know, I like it. I like. I like the auctions. I like I the uniqueness of the either, auctions. By the way, I just think that the auctions... It's, it's, a, it's an hour of auctions. <laughs> yeah, it's an hour of doing the same thing over that. and over. I'm not saying that there is, per se, but sometimes that's wearisome <laughs> for me. <laughs> not for me. I mean, think about it. You know, we did the Jack Vassal auction at Dice Tower Con and did an hour of auctioning off games. Think of it the same way. We're like... I was kind of weary after that, too, <laughs> but I mean, that was going for a good cause. Okay, so what's your final thoughts on the game? My final thoughts is, if you're looking for auctions, you've got it all. If you want a variety of auctions as opposed to the same auction every single time, you've got it all. And I really like the game. I give it an awesomeness rating of 7. All right. And for me, I'm kind of, I kind of waffle somewhere between a 5.5 and a 6.5 because sometimes I'll play it. Not a problem. Although I do want to play it with everyone who knows what they're doing, which sounds bad because, or I'll play with all new players and then like just talk them through it. Uh, maybe you shouldn't do that. Um, and then other times... I'm like, eh, I'm tired of auctions. But it certainly is a game that has influenced the genre and has had a lot of clout. Um, so that's modern art. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. Don't, break, don't slam my box. This is my rare box. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.